Uh, thank you so much for the kind introduction. Uh, so, you know, this is a thought experiment which I always try to play with myself and perhaps, you know, I'll allow you to do as well. Imagine that you have type 1, I mean, I hope it doesn't happen in real life, but imagine that you have type 1 diabetes yourself or someone close to you, right? Maybe a close family member or maybe somebody who, who you know, you are taking care of very closely develops type 1 diabetes. Second, money is not an issue. And third, you know everything what needs to be known about this field. And as you know, most of you do, how, what kind of treatment would you do for yourself or for your close family member with type 1 diabetes? And in the next few slides, you know, if I have type 1 diabetes or if someone close to me develops type 1 diabetes, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Right? And that's what we are going to discuss in the next few slides. So we are going to talk about journey to closed loop insulin devices, where are we in India? So what's a closed loop insulin pump? Now, the human body is designed in a very intricate way, right? You have the pancreas, which is a very sophisticated organism, uh, sophisticated organ. And you know, we have, you know, so much technology advancements, you have machine learning, your AI, and yet we have not been able to replicate the beauty of the pancreas, right? So Remember, your pancreatic beta cell itself, every beta cell is a closed loop device in itself. It has a sensor as well as a process to release insulin in response to the glucose level. So that is what we are trying to replicate with this machine, right? So what this machine does or what the closed loop device does, it senses the glucose through the continuous glucose monitor. It communicates with the insulin pump regarding the current glucose level and based on the glucose level, the insulin is released and then the cycle is completed. So it's a closed loop. This is a closed loop device. I think a real life example of a closed loop device would be our air conditioner. You know, switch on an air conditioner, you set the temperature to let's say 26 degrees, right? And if the temperature increases, the air conditioner will start and it will bring the temperature down. If the temperature reduces, the air conditioner will stop and bring the temperature up, right? So the same way, this is what a closed loop device does. It senses the glucose through the CGM and then communicates to the pump to deliver the insulin. So this is a closed loop insulin device. Now, of course, we can make it more sophisticated. And remember, I told you that almost every single beta cell is actually 1000 times more sophisticated than any device we have been able to manufacture. Also, remember, apart from beta cells, there are also alpha cells, there, are, there is glucagon, it's an opposite action, which which is there in the human body. So it's a very sophisticated system. And we have tried our best, but so far, we have not even come close to it, right. So that's the challenge which we are all facing. So uh, the you know, JDRF has divided uh, six levels of closed loop insulin device. So there was a, a consensus conference where they looked at uh, what to call as a closed loop device and then talked about what are the various generations of closed loop device which can develop, right? So there are six generations. So anybody who is interested in closed loop should know this classification. So the first one is what is known as a very low glucose insulin off pump. It's a very simple device. What it does is when the glucose goes low, the pump gets shut off. Right, very simple, right? So if the blood, let's say you set the threshold to 60 milligram per deciliter. So if the blood glucose goes to less than 60, the pump will shut off, right? We have this pump available in India. It's called the Medtronic VO. Uh, well, most of the pumps that we have uh, are from our sponsors right now, Medtronic. So the most pumps, uh, majority of the pumps in India are available are through Medtronic. So we'll be mainly talking about those pumps. Then you have the hypoglycemia, the hypoglycemia minimizer. What it does is it has a predictive threshold suspense. So when the blood sugar is crashing towards the low side, then before it goes, it goes to low, it switches it off, right? So it means that, you know, let's say you are going to meet an accident. Before you meet an accident, you press the brake, right? Not after you meet the accident. So that is what a predictive threshold does. So if the blood glucose is rapidly falling, right, then the pump can predict that this is what is going to happen. And it shuts off the pump before the patient goes into hypoglycemia, right? So these are the two things, right? Uh, these are the first generation pumps. And then you have the second generation pump. And that is what in India, we are currently at the second generation. So that is stage four pump that we have that is automated basal or hybrid closed loop device. Now, you know, the earlier generation pump can predict hypoglycemia, but they can do nothing for hyperglycemia. So if your blood sugar goes up, then you have to manually intervene. But now currently we have 670G in the US and 780G both in US and India, which is available in India. Uh, this is the uh, hybrid closed loop device. So what this does is that if your sugar goes low or it's going towards low, predictively it shuts off the pump and reduces the insulin dose or closes it. But if the sugar goes high, 
it can calculate recalibrate the dose and increase the basal insulin dose right so this is a automated basal or a hybrid closed loop device and then the next generation would be a fully automated insulin closed loop device now remember currently a 780g pump which we have available in india can only control the basal insulin rate it can only control the control the basal rate but if you are going to have a me if you are going to eat something then you'll have to input what you are going to eat right the carbohydrate content of that and manually take the bolus right so the bolus is still manual but basal is automated but the next generation pumps which is generation 5 what they will be able to do is that they would also be able to you know uh, predict how much bolus of insulin to give based on what glucose you are going to take right we talked about machine learning today and how we could uh, you know predict that glycemic response to foods as we already you know a lot of work has been done in that right so that when integrated with your existing basal pump right can automate this entire process and this is imagine this is what our primitive human body has been doing for many years right not only in us in almost all the mammals right so uh, we are far behind nature in terms of technology that is what i would say and finally you will have the fully automated multi hormone closed loop device which is generation 6 interestingly the clinical trials have already been published for similar pumps right so generation 6 looks like a hypothetical scenario but there are published clinical trials on generation 6 pumps one of them is known as ilet it's of course not available in india yet but what it does is it has multiple hormones just like your human pancreas it has glucose uh, it, sorry it has insulin it has glucagon it has uh, you know other hormones also you can incorporate and what it can do is that you know based on the situation where you are if your glucose goes low then of course it will shut off the insulin but it also release glucagon right and vice versa so it can do multiple of these things and that's a third generation pump so you know i talked to you about the thought experiment that if you or your family member develops type 1 diabetes what would you do right i would for me it's a no brainer right i'll straight away call the metronic guy and say that you know give me a 780g pump today right and you know i mean take my money right it's like that right but you know that's what we'll do unfortunately you know a uh, lot of our patients do not really go through that route you know there is it's like this that you know if i put you in the middle of the sea right there are three things you can do one of course you can say that yaar kuch nahi hoga sakta mera right i'll just sink right second you know maybe you will swim and you will try ke kuch to karke life bache right maybe you know maybe you will succeed maybe you will not who knows but at least you are trying right and there's a third category which says that you know i don't want to sink also i don't want to swim also i want to live but i don't want to swim right so they'll pray that yaar bhagwan bacha lo right so you know it's like that saying that you know bhagwan bhi aake bole teen bar to maine boat bheji but you did not take that boat right it's like that so you know the same thing lot of our unfortunate to say that lot of our patients with type 1 diabetes this is what they are going through you know they are praying for a miracle to happen the thing is that the miracle has already happened right they are not seeing it in front of them so that is what is really a problem but the second challenge is that the speed of development of these devices is extremely slow and you can understand why right so anybody who has you know had any relation correlation with any pharma company you know how much time it takes for a drug to develop right the you have the phase 1 clinical trial phase 2 trials phase 3 trials the same amount of time takes for a device also to develop right and a device which is updated also takes time right it has to go through a long series of regulatory process right and these drugs you know they are so expensive they also take the cost of the research which is involved in that when when you are paying ultimately right the same thing also happens with electronic and medical devices if i put a pacemaker in you right you are not only paying for the pacemaker but you are also paying for the amount of money medtronic has done for research for making that pacemaker available to you right so in that sense drug discovery is faster in a sense because it's a mass production device but pump insulin pumps and other things though these companies are interested the development is very slow because it is very expensive and the end users are very small number right the number of type 1 patients if this disease was for a large large population you would have you know very sophisticated pumps already available in the planet right but unfortunately you are dealing with a minority which unfortunately do not have much purchasing power also so frustrated with this kind of situation there were a lot of parents who were put in the middle of the sea and they decided that enough is enough we will not sink we'll try to swim right and they launched a movement which is called do it yourself right you know something which is very proud to say that on 8th september 2022 one day prior one of these 
initiatives, which is called the Open APS Project, Open Artificial Pancreas Project, published an article in New England Journal of Medicine just one day prior to this lecture, right? This is the perhaps the finest example of how patient advocacy, right, can help change the lives of the patients themselves, right? These are normal people, parents like you and me, who probably thought that, you know, I want to do better for my child. And if the companies are not doing it, I'll start doing it myself, right? And this is what ultimately happened. So this was a do-it-yourself movement uh, or DIAPS movement. And they got together with a simple hashtag called we are not waiting, right? And there's another movement called D-Dads movement, right? Well, there's a lot of contribution done by D-Dads. D-Dads are dads of diabetic patients, right? And uh, what, how they have contributed to the world. Right. Uh, so, what is DIY? DIY is do it yourself. Right. So, what these people said that is, these companies are not going to make artificial pancreas or sophisticated pumps. We'll do it ourselves. So, what they did was, right. Like I said, regulatory issues hamper the process of development very slowly, and the development is very costly. Right. So, end of the day, a 780G pump still costs you about seven to eight lakh rupees. Right. But if you, you know, are a, you're a programmer or you're a biomedical engineer, if you can make an app or a device yourself maybe at a cheaper cost, you might be able to do a better job, right? So there are some examples of these DIY things which have really been successful. And the first and the most simplest one was what was known as a night scout device, right? So what these people did, right? And now it seems very intuitive that it was very simple. But at that point of time, when this started, it was not that simple, right? So what happens is that the CGM device which you have, right? It reads the glucose value, right? But this glucose value is stored in the device which you're using. What if you could take this take these values and put it on a cloud so that let's say, you know, I am a father of a type one child and my child is playing, right? Or child is in another city in living in a hostel, right? If I could look at her sugar values sitting at home, how simple it would be for me, right? It, it's a simple life for me. So that is what they did with Night Scout. So this is actually a D dad, right? A father of a type one girl whose child actually went to college. And what he did was he hacked the CGM device he put the data, put it on cloud and he could then sit at home and access his child's data and feel safer and could intervene if the child develops severe hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, right? So this is Night Scout. They opened a Facebook page, believe you or not, right? Social media is very successful in that sense. They opened a Facebook page, got people together. A lot of people contributed to this and now it's actually a easily available project called the Night Scout. You can use any CGM device and convert it into, take the data from that and put it on cloud. As a parent, you can sit at home and monitor that, right? The other one, perhaps the most successful one is this guy, what you see here is called Edward Damiano. Edward Damiano is a biomedical engineer himself, right? Uh, from Boston University. He said, if he's a father of a type one child, he said, if anybody in the world can do it, I can do it, right? I have access to Harvard. I have access to the best technology. I'm a biomedical engineer myself. If, if I can do it, if nobody else can do it, I can do it, right? So he started working on this called ILET, right? Again, ILET, there have already been publications for that in New England Journal of Medicine. ILET is the world's first bi-hormonal artificial pancreas, which uses insulin and glucagon, right? Initially, they started with a standard Medtronic pump and used a software application, which they developed, but now they actually made a device. And this device is going to be approved very soon by US FDA and going to be available in the markets very soon. Uh, there's another company called the Bigfoot Biomedical Tech, which was started by three D-Dads. And they, you know, make simple devices. For example, they have recently made a uh, pen cap which works with any insulin pen right when you attach it to that it will guide you how much dose of insulin to take which makes it very simple right we already talked about night scout uh, and there's something called riley link riley link is a device which interconnects the iphone with the insulin pump right now with this device your iphone can then communicate with the insulin pump right so these are all initiatives taken by patients themselves these are not these are not companies these are not Medtronic or these are not uh, you know abbott these are normal people like you and me who have taken initiatives to help their own children, right? And then hence help the society as well. So to make a DIY pump, right? Let's say, you know, you want to do it yourself. It's, you need three things. You need a CGM, you need a pump, and you need a smartphone or a computer which can connect the two, right? So a CGM device, uh, you know, this, the data from should, should be read. So you take the data from the CGM, put it on a cloud, which can be done through Night Scout. There are also many apps currently available called Glimp, for Android or your Spike for iOS, which you can use. Uh, you can use third-party devices which can convert this NFC into Bluetooth, like Bluecon, etc. The pump should be loopable, right? Which means, and Medtronic will not like it, you will re require an older generation Medtronic pump. Why? Because older generation Medtronic pump could be hacked, right? Newer generations cannot be, right? So you hack the older pump, 
right? And then you communicate, you 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 know, you re replace the software and use your smartphone to control the pump, right? So this is what was DIY, right? So again, you know, like I said, there have been DIY protocols. Remember, you require software as well, right? You require somebody to say that how much insulin should be delivered based on the glucose. And this is done by three uh, open source platforms. One is called Open APS, the other is called Android APS, and third one is called Loop. And the create trial, which was just published yesterday, was using Open APS, right? So this is open source. Open source means anybody can contribute. You and I can also, if you know a little bit of programming, can help uh, move this movement forward. So where do we stand as far as closed loop devices concerned, right? So we are actually very happy that in India we have uh, the perhaps currently the most advanced commercially available insulin pump that is a 780G, right? We have it available in India. Of course, it is expensive, right? Nothing which is good comes cheap. That's for sure. But you know, this is something I always say whenever I talk about insulin pump. If you have a child, right, uh, this pump costs 7 to 8 lakh rupees. Any car, any car you take, right, even, you know, a simplest uh, Baruti Alto, highest version, probably will cost you 6 to 7 lakhs, right. So, you know, when I have parents come to me, right, middle class parents like you and me, who come and say that, sir, 7 lakhs to we cannot afford, right. This is what I tell them. You know, if you, if you can afford a car, I'm sure very well you can afford a pump, right. This pump will actually make a bigger difference to your child's life than the car. Right? That's as simple as that, right? So that is the important thing. It is definitely expensive. I am sure not everybody can afford 7 to 8 lakh rupees, but at the end of the day, it really changes the life of patients. You have seen time and range improve like, you know, miraculously. We of course have small but significant, uh, you know, participation in the DIY movement also. In fact, very interestingly, Dr. Jyoti there has a, has a detailed article on DIY. Right, you can go through that, it's easily available. Right, a beautiful article on the entire aspect, right from history to the current status of the DIY app. And you have Jazz here, who is you know, who uses a DIY pump herself. Right, so it's a photo taken from perhaps I think Diacare Con only somewhere, uh, maybe a couple of years back. Right, so we have some participation as far as the closed loop concern uh, is concerned, but unfortunately, we are still very far, far away. And I'll tell you, we have a lot more potential. And I, what's really hurting me is that. Unfortunately, the potential is much more than what we are really doing, right? So where can we go from here? And again, we have a tremendous pool of talent in the engineering space. Almost, you know, you take any society, you may take my own building, we have 15 engineers in our building, right? Or some 15 people who have done some engineering degree, right? Everybody, everyone has, you know, family members who are engineers, right? So once my brother-in-law is an engineer, I talked to him that, you know, we're talking about CGM devices. And he said, this is very basic technology. So simple, right? But then why are you not doing it? That's the question. You know, you have so many seats for biomedical engineering. Where, where is the Indian pump? I don't see it, right? Where is the Indian Medtronic? Where is the Indian, Indian, you know, uh, Abbott, right? We don't have that. Why is it? Why is it? Right? I don't know. Right? So we have a lot of engineering talent and they really need to work with clinicians to make devices which are useful to real life people. Right? Uh, the technology from these pumps is very basic. Right? Even your smartphone is 10 times more sophisticated than any Medtronic pump. Right? It's, it's that big a uh, you know, problem. Right? Uh, thankfully, our regulatory systems are very friendly. Right? It's a, it's a loophole. Right? But to get an approval is much easier in India. And if we have this available, why not do it? Right? It's much more complex and difficult. Uh, you know, I had some friends who wanted to start a company in the US, some technology, healthcare technology. I, I told them, don't do it. Right? You will you will burn your fingers. And now they're burning their fingers and they're coming back to me. Right? It's it's very expensive, difficult. You need lawyers, you need, uh, you know, advisors, you know, a lot of things in US. In India, it's much more simpler. Right? Uh, of course, you know, if we do this, we'd be leading the way in the field of diabetes technology, which is the last slide, and not following the best. We should be the leaders, right? Uh, you know, in terms of numbers, we have a huge pool of type 1 diabetes patients. We have, you know, a lot of engineers, we have a lot of brilliant doctors, right? Why are we still far away? So we should be leading the way, and we should, you know, we need better coordination between the engineering and medical field for this to happen, right? And all this seems uh, very trivial, but, you know, let me tell you, as of 2022 September, the most number of paper published, right, comes from China, right? China, a country which doesn't even speak English, have maximum number of medical publications published every year since the last decade, right? Ten years back, they had almost nothing. If you search for any literature right now, almost every NEJM copy you pick up, any Lancet copy you pick up, you'll have one article from a Chinese consortium, right? 
they are swimming they are not sinking they are not praying right they are swimming and that is what we also need to do and we have like i said could be the leaders in the technology space you know we might not be leaders in perhaps other spaces right but in space of technology we can definitely be the leaders right so the take home message is this is what is a closed loop device so there are six generations of artificial insulin uh, of of what is known as artificial pancreas or closed loop devices we have a few pumps in india 620 and 640 gs and 780 g which are available and we have some participation in the diy movement which could be much more uh, the do it yourself movement it's it's a changing device you know this is changing the device and industry i think you know a lot of participation from the open systems and it's going to you know like i said we are really taking this forward and most importantly we have i think this is the biggest pain point we have a lot of potential and we definitely need to do more right not just follow the west lead them right and we need to have a better coordination between engineering and medical field for this trap and now we are very happy that you know we have the dtech accelerator today where we are where you know uh, the organizers are connecting the finance system with the uh, you know with the startups right but we of course need much more coordination in this field uh, to have you know better better participation here thank you for patience